Hello there. All right, so oh, I've been busy today. Cleaning up the porch, the balcony. Uh, got some, some gar well, I had to take the garbage out. I had a few bags, a few boxes and stuff. And then I planted, I'm not sure, these bulbs I bought last year. Uh, when I never got them in last spring. I was having, I was just starting to come out of a little bit of a fog. And I, uh, last Christmas I couldn't even really get decorations up or, you know, I put the tree up, but I didn't um, put any ornaments up, didn't decorate outside. So I'm going to try with these holidays, well, the bigger holidays. I used to decorate for like all of them, Easter, 4th of July, you know, any other patriotic, Labor Day. I used to all the time. And, you know, when I, when I didn't have my kids living with me anymore, I, uh, I didn't do the Easter, the St. Patrick's Day, things like that that I used to. Even Thanksgiving um, would be smaller decorations, but like Halloween and Christmas, those kind of things, big time, <laughs> big time decor. Um, but uh, I never got anything planted last year that was miserable all spring and summer and fall because of it. I'm hoping these bulbs, these corms are good. They were gladiola and some freesia and some trigata lily. Is that trigata or something like that? It's like a cross between an orchid and a lily. It's not like a lily lily. It's got stubby uh, leaves but um, or stubby petals but it's uh it's spotted. And, um, binoculars, binoculars, uh, um, several handful of those. And we'll see if the, um, gladiolas will make it or not. Um, they weren't soft. I mean, some were just not a bad, you know, dust, but some were still hard. But, um, we'll see. If not, okay. They were just from the Dollar Tree. But I also, um, Got the seeds planted in my windows. I think we're good now in Jersey. We should, we should be good. It's April 16th. Ooh, Trump's first day for his criminal court. And he, no, second day. And I uh, guess they're off tomorrow. And he fell asleep. Dude, he fell asleep the first freaking hour on jury selection. Wow. Who's Dozy Dan? <laughs> Dozy Don now, right? Talking about Sleepy Joe. Uh, talking nothing like Drowsy Donald. <laughs> uh, Dozy Donald. Um, <clears throat> Don Snorleon. <laughs> so, uh, oh, elections. Just can we talk for a second? Come, come here. Come here. Okay. If you're able to work elections, and it's not just election day, they have early elections, and like our elections where I am start in June because we've got local stuff and you have schools, boards, stuff. You know, you got all different kinds of things. So it's not just September. <laughs> And November, um, you go, I know in my state they've got, um, I don't think they called it digital, something, um, they're new, uh, uh, machines. Uh, what you know, normally, now I worked for like a decade in, in doing, uh, the polling places, elections, in Arizona when I lived there for 32 years. I did that for a decade. Um, eight of those years, I wound up as a supervisor in a polling place. Um, here, it looks about the same. Usually, it's people that are older, 50 years and older type of people that, that work it. 
and are usually um, inspectors. Um, I started working the elections when I was, oh my gosh, back in my 30s and um, late 20s. And um, it, it's a long day. It's a long day. It can be 15 hour day. Uh, you have to get be there like at five in the morning because it opens early, but y'all got to be there early to get everything set up and all the electioneering signs and all. You, you got everybody has their own jobs. You have to go over all the materials. Um, I was like I think the youngest uh, at that time in 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 Tucson. I was like the youngest inspector. I was like 32 or something like that, 34. Because uh, most of them were in their 50s and over. Um, but after a couple of years, I I had it. Now, that was before my, the car accident that messed up my foot and my wrist and all kinds of good stuff. Um, and started falling apart 30 years later. Um, here we are. <laughs> but um, it's, a long, it's a long shift, especially if you're... Um, either the, ins the inspector or what they call the marshal. And then if, if the inspector is a Democrat, the marshal has to be a Republican. But the, what I was going to say is you have to be registered as a Republican or, or a Democrat to work it. That doesn't mean you have to vote that way. Um, because they have to, that's for uh, like shenanigans uh, patrol, basically. Uh, you have three, six people working at elections, and it's um, three Democrats and three Republicans. They're the people at the at the tables. It should be the same here or in Arizona back 30 years ago. It's they should work basically the same. You have two judge with just the titles: two judges, two clerks. Um, that's one Democrat judge and one Republican judge, one Democrat clerk, one Republican clerk, and whatever uh, party the inspector is, the marshal is considered, um, is, is the opposite, is the other main party. Um, and that's because the clerks and the judges are the four people you see sitting at the tables checking the books. They have to be exactly the same. Okay, so the Republican writing in the book has to have the same thing that Democrats writing in their book. Um, now the marshal is considered the like the cop of, of the polling place. They're the ones that should be, uh, if anybody's electioneering, I think it's 75 feet here, um, within the line, uh, they have to push him back. The cop is the one that has any issues, will take it if they can't figure it, they take it to the inspector. The inspector and the, the marshal are the ones that like give breaks for some somebody to go have lunch, go to the bathroom, have a smoke break, whatever it is. Um, and they basically, if somebody's wearing anything that's an elephant or a donkey, it doesn't have to be the party emblem, you know, the cartoon. If it's a tiger, if it's an, if it's a donkey or an elephant, in like a natural shirt, anything um, that includes backpacks, hats, scarves, shirts, pants, shorts, socks, shoes, uh, earrings, necklace, jewelry, any kind of headgear, anything that has a party insignia or a candidate insignia, anything like that has got to go. Either, either take it off or a shirt, turn it inside out, something. But that's basically what the marshal is, is, in, is, is in charge of. And the inspector is the one that's responsible for everything. Um, and after the polls close, y'all got to count. And everything has to come up. So if you have a spoiled ballot, if you have a questionable ballot, if that's like if your name isn't on the rolls, but they have to make sure where you used to be. It's, it's called questionable only because they want to make sure that you, there was not a ballot came in at the last place you voted. Um, if, if, there, if that wasn't voted, if you didn't vote at that voting place and you didn't vote um, mail, 
ballot or early ballot, ballot, you know, any of that, then they'll go ahead and count that. If if you are on, if you did on one of those, they toss it. So, but all of those things have to be accounted for, and you can't just throw in the garbage bag and say, "Oh, we tossed it out." You have to keep those, put them in a certain lockbox to prove to the officials when you turn it in at the end of the night that, um, yes, see, this is why it was spoiled. They marked it wrong. So we had to, but you have to show those. You can't just say it. That's why I think everybody, when they first get registered to vote, they are re they should be required. To go to the classes that when you work the elections you go to it's about a three and a half hour class but everybody should have to be have to do that in order to get registered one time so they learn how voting works if everybody knew exactly all the checks and counter checks and balances and watching this and signing that and triple signing that and you know, quadruple checking this and everything has to line up and one thing can't be out of state. One thing cannot be different. Not one, not by one. And if they, everybody had to learn that when they first got their registration to vote, nobody would have, not as many would have believed about the election being stolen because it wasn't. And if you knew how they worked, you would understand that, especially if you understood how each state works, because every state has a little difference in its thought, not with what I just told you. That's pretty much has to be the same. Things that like um, the dates or when early voting can be and, you know, if it has to be this or that, what you have to, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but that's, and you do get paid. Back when I worked, that was like, remember, that was like, 20 years ago at least 25 30 you know by the time i ended and i think we got i think it was like for 15, it was about a 15 hour day and maybe a 14 hour day for everybody except the uh, um in inspector and the marshal and the reason is after everything comes out and everything's locked and signed those four of those people, the judges and the clerks that did the books and stuff, can finally leave, but we have to take, and it has to be one from each party, so nobody messes with the seals and the signatures and any of the other stuff. Um, we even have to lock pens so we don't go and mess with it. And we have two people, one from each party, go together down to wherever the turning in spot is. Like in Tucson, it was downtown in one of the underground um parking garages um you know it was nighttime of course by then eight eight nine ten ten o'clock something like that by the time we got home <laughs> and then whoever drove we go back where the other person's car is or whatever and then we go home um, but that's how it goes you can't just leave it there and have election people turn it in it has to be monitored and we can't just lock up the building. We can't do that. It has to be personally monitored. So there's not just on election day, they need six people at each polling place. So it's not just on election day, it's all the early voting days as well. Um, but if you wanna do that, back when I was doing it, I mean, that, like I said, that was 30 years ago or whatever. I think we got $77 and the inspector got 135 and that was, because if anything was wrong or lost or messed up, it was the inspector's ass when it came down to it. It was our butt. The other five, you are the one in charge. So it all comes down to something happens. You did not catch it and you let everybody go before it was, you know, evened out and figured out <laughs> correctly and you could be in a lot of trouble i mean one person one polling place could have to the cost of another of a special election i mean as the inspector you do not i mean just working for a polling place you do not want to hear precinct such and such is going to have to be re-voted 
it's like, oh God, that was the one I worked. You don't ever want to hear that. My, I never heard that. My precincts never had that happen. Because <laughs> I was just so paranoid from the start about, oh my God, I cannot be, I cannot be the, the, the polling precinct that, <laughs> that screwed the election up, you know? Um, but yeah, I think now for that 15 hour for that election working that day, you get like $300 or something. <laughs> so, I mean, I used to do for 77 and then for those last eight years, it was 135. That's a long day for 135 bucks. Um, but yeah, I just looked into it for this year. I tried to do it last year, but I, I was, I was just starting to come out of that. That fog. I, I was not. I wanted to, but I was not. And I could have used the money, but I, I just was not ready to face the public for 15 hours and be fine, you know? So, um, I'm trying, Gabe. I'm trying. Gabe is my spirit son. But, um, I know I haven't told that story yet, but. One of these days, I might. Um, I never got to tell him in person, so I don't know if I'll ever be able to tell my Earth twin son because with Asperger, I'm not, he's not big on emotions and you know, uh, stuff like that. It's like, he's very Spock, very Spock. And, you know, loving, admiring, you know, that kind of thing. Um, grief, things like that, that's, that, that doesn't make sense. Why waste energy, you know? It's, it's, I don't get it, you know? It, it is, it is what it is, and it's, it's happened, and, we just, you know, I can't do anything about it, so I just, you know, let's go move forward. I, I get they don't have that. I get that. And I know both boys had very good hearts, and I know Daryl did. Knowing him as a little one. Those first five, six, five and a half years, six years I had him. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you want to make sure elect your elections where you are, are, uh, I'm trying to get past this, um, are not only being done correctly, <laughs> um, but make some money and uh the ones for the presidential ones at the end of the year it's always before the holidays and it wouldn't be bad hard to have you know 300 bucks in september and then right before christmas have another 300 i mean it kind of be nice right <laughs> um so if you want to work the elections. First of all, they're they're really gonna need people. Really gonna need people. I know some states more than others, but because what happened in the last election, we say no more at the last election and I mean starting this time that that then <laughs> and and then right before the inauguration, we all know what happened. Um, there are people, the way Giuliani, you know, nailed. I, I'm 30 minutes from Bedminster. So, um, y'all have Trumpers around, okay? Um, but... Um, 
I haven't heard of anything in, no, I don't know, but in Jersey, but. <sighs> they're needing people because even people that didn't have a problem, they're scared. And I, I'm, I'm not lost for words. I'm trying to say it so it doesn't. I'm not going to say there's no harm, there's no danger. I mean, even before Trump showed up and, and made and caused politics to become more than just sassy mudslinging, that used to be, oh my God, did you see how he really kind of hit him with that? Nowadays, it's like pff, nothing. And that's sad because that was like playing dirty a little bit it was outrageous now it's just like at least the republican campaign that's all that's called but um i still think state place some places are gonna need are, are, are really not gonna get the people um, especially where there already was some heated tempers, shall we say, four years ago. Um, but they really need people to work. They really need people to work. Um, and if you worked early voting and then the regular voting day, if they re you were able to happen to be assigned to that, that's like 600 bucks in a month. I mean, you know, and even if you're on SSI or something, it wouldn't have to be recorded, reported, because you have, the only time excess money has to be reported is if it puts you where you have to, uh, I get so little that I don't even have to file taxes because I don't make enough to file taxes. That's sad. I, I don't get enough from SSI. And it's not SSI, it's not Social Security Disability, it's Social Security, uh, Supplemental Social Security, you know, income. And then for disability, they're different and it's less. But you don't even have to report it if you're on SSI unless you have a consistent, the same consistent amount for like six months. You know, and it has to be four hundred dollars or five hundred or something like that over. You know, you have to make that much per month consistently for six months before you're required to to start um, reporting it. And like I said, if that amount that you make doesn't even put you in a bracket where you even have to file, like like me, like I said, I don't even. Then even better. Um, because I get less than what somebody on a full-time minimum wage job would get. Um, that I get less than that in a month. I get less than a thousand bucks a month. And there's a lot of people that make minimum wage and they have EBT for food, you know, food stamps, and they have, like I do, and they have uh, housing vouchers, which pays part of your rent, which I do also. But there's a lot of people making minimum wage that have those things too and I don't even make what minimum is and I have them so you know people that make minimum wage are actually having more income and as much outgo as somebody who's on SSI that's sad because your entire working life you paid into this shit you know but, um, yeah, when you're working with the elections, it's not a, you know, consistent every month, you know. And, uh, so that, that's a windfall for any kind of program like that. That like you're worried about, oh, I have to report. It, it's not enough because it's not consistent, which is, a uh, good to go. So look into your, um, your state government, you know, your county clerk. And look it up online, um, just work the polling place, you know, just search work the polling place in 
whatever your zip code or your state whatever you know and it'll bring you to that information you'll fill out the application and you could do it digitally and then you send it and then they'll tell you when the class is that have a bunch of different classes and they're about three and a half hours each and you only have to go to one of them but they have some in the daytime and some in the evenings and some on the weekends so everybody no matter when they work they can find a way to get there um, and then you just once you send do the application they'll send something back to you uh, email you back and send you to choose a class a thing and then they'll set you up and then you just go to the class when and where they say uh, the, the time of day that they tell you to at the place and than any of the other information you'll get there so it's something for y'all to look into work in the elections you can make some money it is a very long day I'm just letting you know that you should be bringing either you're gonna need to either bring food or bring money to have like delivery pizza or something like that um, and if you're not standby, if you're if you're assigned a polling place before the, the day that you're working, you could also be if if they have enough people, you could be a standby, which means they'll call you that day, sometimes that morning, being uh, get your butt up, we need you. Now, if you're already supposed to be assigned before that day, you'll get your check after everything's signed before um, we they'll come they'll have somebody come and bring all, everybody's checks around and it, the only person people that won't get a check that day that night is the ones that were on standby and we'll call it last minute the day before or that morning like at four in the morning we don't have some you know because like let's just say somebody at my i go to a polling place i'm in charge let's just say i probably won't be because they've never had seen me work but five of us are there nobody shows up the inspector has to call the, the inspectors given the numbers that they need and all the people they have to call the person if they can't get in touch with the person they have to call the elections the elections will have to find somebody to get over there and then you're gonna have to start setting up until that person gets there um and you can't open the polling place until that person's there and you need to get that person there <laughs> that person has to get there because um, they really can't hold opening the polling places people have to go to work a lot of them are going beforehand because they can't go after work so but just so you know they're probably the same but when i worked them in two in arizona no radios no little TVs, no Walkmans, no nothing, no music, no books, no magazines, no reading, no um, crossword puzzles, nothing. Zip. Zip. If there aren't people voting, you talk or you, I guess you could, they didn't have cell phones. The thing is, when I worked in Tucson, Tucson, there weren't many times that the polling places, all the polling, were just constantly, some, there were definitely lines waiting, but here in Jersey, everything's smaller and there's a lot, like, you're in, you're out, it's never, like, long lines or anything. Tucson, I remember people in line for, like, 40 minutes, an hour, because it was a time that was a popular time. Everybody was either go before work or after, you know, that kind of thing. Lunchtime, that type of thing. Um, they'd rather go without lunch and go vote than, you know, come go vote after work. They just want to go home. Or they have a date or whatever. So, um, it's kind of a rough, rough draft of how it goes. Um, when I would work in, in Arizona, Tucson, if I was going to be, after a, after a couple years, they try to get you into 
the precinct, like, by you, like, either your precinct that you vote in, so you could just vote that day, or um, very near to where you live. And, um, that's usually a good thing. Now, if they need to, if they need somebody in a particular place, and there's somebody that's fit for a way, but that's the only people, they'll let you know, wait, we got a far place to, we got a, a place, a person, you know, we have an assignment, an empty slot at this place. I know you're far away, can you go, you know, so, and if not, then you just be standby or something, but, it, like I said, it is a long day, you do have to bring your own food, it can be incredibly boring, especially if you're working with the other people aren't super, you know, engaging kind of thing, it can be kind of like, ooh. But, because uh, you don't want to fall asleep either. If you just like. Now, I don't know how they work, and I'll find out when I go uh, to my class next month. But um, I'm not sure how they're doing it with cell phones now. Because I, used, I worked it before we had that thing. So we didn't have to worry. Um, just no Walkmans or Discmans or any of that. Um. Or whatever the kids are using these days. <laughs> but, um, but that's, that's, uh, something some of you might want to look into. And most places, they, they do either need people to fill positions or they'll, they have just enough and they're going to need some standbys in case. Because shit happens, you know? You're all ready, and that morning, you're getting ready, and it's like, something happens, you're like, oh, God. Sometimes it's not even for you, and you're like, you call up the elections at 3 in the morning, going, oh, my God, you're not going to believe this. I can't be the elections today. I was so sorry, you know. And somebody's running, going, ugh. Can you call at 3.30 to be told, please show up at 5 if can you show up? <laughs> And I have had that a few times where I was in charge of the polling place in Arizona and I'm just like, the person does you show up. One time, I, they weren't there and I called and I, they didn't answer. So I called the elections number and they called me back about 10 minutes later and they said, yeah, they just woke up <laughs> and they're not going to rush. So we have a standby coming. It's hard enough to get everything you need to get up and posted and, and, and working order and counted. And as it is, with six of y'all busted hiney. <laughs> and <laughs> when there's one, God forbid, more than one, that last minute can't show up. It's really a, a heart workout real quick. Real at dark 30, man. <laughs> you know? But, uh, like I said, it is, it is a nice little chunk of change. And, uh, it, it is something that not enough people do. Just, you know, I've never been called. And I, I don't have a problem doing jury duty, but I've never been called. Ever. And I've been registered to vote. They don't just go by um, driver's licenses. I've never, in 61 years, oh yeah, I was asked once when I finally moved back here, like 12 years ago, and I couldn't do it because of where I was. I had no way. I was at my sister's. I couldn't get anywhere. And they didn't offer for taking me there, so I'm like, dudes, I can't show up. I have no transportation. I don't mind doing it, but you know, so they just said, forget it. I don't, I would like to be on a jury, actually. 
But anyway, uh, if you haven't done that, I don't want to, I mean, we need to put our part in too. You can't bitch about the government if you're not willing to do some of the stuff that citizens need to help out with. Jury duty, work in the elections, I mean, I don't know, there are things that any of us can do that you don't need special training or teaching or credentials for. So that is something to think about. Um, and most of the places are either at, uh, in like a, a meeting room at hotels or in schools or churches or something where they have some sort of like microwaves or little kitchen areas that, you know, like the t if it's in a school, at the, like in the gymnasium sometimes, um, they'll let you, us, the, the election people, like use the fridge in the, in the, in the uh, teacher lounge, you know, use the, elect the microwaves and stuff like that, the coffee pots and stuff. Because you need coffee. You, they've got to be able to, where we can heat our food and stuff, go to the bathroom and stuff like that. So, um, yes, it's a very long day. Yes, you have to go to that three and a half hour class the month before you work the election. And every year you work elections, you have to have that refresh of refresher class within the last 12 months of working the election. So do it now. Like, if I do mine in May, then I can, all the work for the rest of this year, I can, don't have to go to another class. And, like I said, it's a chunk of change, and at least you're doing some sort of, you know, citizens kind of work. So, if you have questions, leave them down there. Or, better yet, get a hold of your county clerk for your elections and where to apply, where your application for your state is and your county and that, and get to it because they're, they're sending out the classes in the different states right about now for the ones that have local things coming up in the summer. So get on the list. And you can always do um, early voting. If you're working the voting and you're not working in your own police place, you can do mail-in voting. You can do early voting. Just pop that puppy in and you're done. And uh, I, I wouldn't do mail-in just because uh, DeJoy has the post office. Things that say return addresses with EBT, housing authority, which are housing vouchers, um, any kind of programs, medic, medic, um, Medicaid, any of those programs that um, Republicans or Magpublicans want to eliminate if they get back into power. Um, those seem to get lost a lot. Any kind, every time you have something that comes in snail mail so I'm not sure if I would mail in if you if you actually get a mail-in ballot because every time I've tried it never shows up shows up after election day after I've already voted <laughs> um, you know and let them know I don't even try anymore <laughs> you know but, yeah, if you do, and you do happen to get a mail-in ballot, and you actually get it in time, I'm not sure if I'd put it in the mail to get it back. Um, I would go to the one of the drop boxes, one of the official drop boxes for the early voting, just to be sure. Because, no, I do not trust DeJoy, and I have not trusted him since the antics he pulled, um, his little kerfuffle he created about the machines and the sorting machines and all that. So, um, yeah. But just as a, as a, in the back of your head, you need some extra money 
yes, it's a long day. Yes, it can be a very boring day, but you do learn how elections work. And that also comes in handy to inform others that might tell you some falsities and they believe it's true about elections past and future so it also like I said it teaches you so you know the facts you could tell anybody that you need to the facts and you'll be correct in giving that information as well as you're making some money you got to put the time in but you know so yeah um work the elections um and, and I'm doing it even though I yeah I'm a little I'm not like I was 30 years ago you know um I used to be able to handle myself but you know I got a messed up foot and a messed up back and a messed up wrist shit happens from accidents <laughs> so um I'm a little I don't want to say hesitant or something, but yeah, I'm a little kind of like, let's just not think about if there's an issue, but be ready for it in case. But I really don't think, um, it, it really doesn't, you know, if somebody's going off, they're going to go off about, you know, how things go, especially depending on how the trials go. So that matters too, I think. Um, depending on how they go and how people react to things, it all depends how much pushback come election days we're going to get. So especially the November one is the, you know, the big thing. But, um, like I said, it, it is worth it when it's over and you've got that money in your hand, it's like, okay, it, it was worth it. <laughs> Once you've recovered from that, it is a very long day. Even when you're younger, it was a long day. <laughs> so it's, you know, but you, like I said, you're not just making money, but you're doing your, your part as a citizen to, to help your country when it needs the extra help to paying you for it. I mean, come on. Shut up. Anyway, make sure you stay hydrated. It's starting to get warm out there. I am so tired. I was out in the sun for hours today. Planted, got all the pots and stuff, dug up a little part of soil, put up sunflowers and see how the gladiolas, if, they, if they're alive still or not. And... Let's see what happens. I'm probably going to sleep well tonight. But I am off to make some dinner because I really haven't eaten much today at all. I am realizing. So, drink fluids, specifically water. Mio drops, it's still water. And um, be kind, be patient, and don't have a good day. Have a great day. Peace out. Take care.